What is up everybody and welcome to a brand new video on my channel where you get the latest news from a Russian citizen talking about the Russian news. And today we're going to be talking about some really interesting topics. For example, Russia going back in time, conscripts getting lied to to sign contracts to go and fight in Ukraine and doctors being put to prison for five and a half years for things they probably haven't done. Let's get to it. First topic I really wanted to get off my heart very quickly here is talking about the country that has fallen down to its knees back when the USSR collapsed and then it stood up from that knee and everything has changed. A lot of people, when I was a little kid and still to this day, are saying that life during USSR was the best. That's when the government gave you free apartments, there was food on the tables and all that stuff, which wasn't really true. Because in reality, people didn't have enough money to get themselves food. They lived in a communist regime where they couldn't even talk about the West. Because... Your neighbor can snitch on you and you could end up in prison. Very horrible times back in USSR. But oh wait, wait a minute, isn't that what's happening in Russia right now? Yes it is. If you don't agree with the government, you get sent to prison. If you say that the West is better, people are going to be side-eyeing you, thinking that you're absolutely crazy because things that are said on television is completely different. And Russian television can never lie to anybody. The availability of cars in Russia has almost returned to the level of USSR. In the 1980s, a Moskvich car, Soviet-made car, cost 45 average salaries. Today, the average price of a new car has reached 3.67 million rubles, which is around $37,000. A very hard purchase to make, considering you probably earn 36,000 rubles a month, which is $360, but you could have a better job and earn $500 or $600. In the best case scenario, it could even be $1,000. But I don't even know what sort of a job you would have to do for that much money in Russia in Moscow in general, because on the outskirts of Moscow, it's very hard to find a salary that's going to be paying you that much money. That's also an average of 45 salaries to purchase yourself a car, according to the official Russian data. So literally taking this information from the original sources, from the sources of the Russian Federation, they basically say that you only need 45 average salaries to be able to purchase yourself a car. But there's no need to worry. Just like the Russian government said, it is because of very high salaries. That's why the inflation is so high in Russia. Yes, guys, the government officials actually say that the prices of everything have risen so much in Russia because people earn way more money and people want to spend more money, but that's not the reality. I doubt that if Russians made more money, everything started costing way more because then it makes absolutely zero sense. They're not talking about the sanctions. They're not talking about the fact that they can't even produce butter at the same levels anymore. So they have to import butter from Turkey and from United Arab Emirates. But as you guys know, there's not that many cows in Dubai, for example. So, little little hint to you guys. Most of the butter from UAE actually comes from Ukraine. So, from Russians buying the butter, they're actually sponsoring the Ukrainian government. I wonder if anybody has been sent to prison for purchasing that butter. Have the importers been sent to prison? Because there's many cases that many people went to prison for five, six, ten years, just because they sent a few dollars for the support 
of the Ukrainian army. What's going to happen to the guys importing the butter? What's going to happen to the citizens buying the butter? Very, very good question. Into the next news, which is actually very, very interesting. If you did not know, in Russia, you have to do a mandatory one-year conscription service. Just like in South Korea, for example. In South Korea, it's around two years, I'm sure. Anyways, you turn 18, you go to the army, you serve your one year, and you're just on the territory of Russia, peeling potatoes, painting the grass greener, and doing all the intellectual things that you do in a Russian military. But in Chelyabinsk region, conscripts were forced to sign a contract and threatened with being sent to the front lines. So, you got that right. They were threatened to sign the contract because if they didn't, they would get sent to the front lines. But if you sign a contract, that means you go to the front lines. Doesn't make any sense, but I got this little message right here that I found from some sources of one of the conscripts that is talking to one of his friends or family members. Let's actually check this out and read it out real quick. So here we got some messages from Telegram. Two weeks ago, the boys went. In the end, they didn't even get there. There was an arrival on the train. By arrival, he means a strike on the train. A third immediately minus. A third of the military that was going somewhere minus and half wounded. They have documents ready for any occasion. They write or contract retroactively for a person or something like a failure to comply with an order, or negligence. Responsibility is transferred to stay clean. This is one of the soldiers that have signed a contract that he didn't even want to sign in the first place. The contract, they said, something else. To work in the state during the military service. So a lot of those guys thought that by signing this contract, you're just going to be working inside of the military. Like not going anywhere, but staying here. In the state, they said, like they won't send you anywhere. You can quit easily, at least in a year, at least within three months. Like they'll just fire me. But there is no way to check this and all this pressure. Yes, I understand that they fooled me. That's why I'm trying to break up. It's not exactly comfortable to listen to, of course, voice. Somebody send him a voice message, but I'll try. I also know about the extension. We only found this out later when the phones were issued. So after the phones were issued, they started Googling what the heck they signed. And that was a contract for military service. Yesterday, our political officer came so that we write explanatory notes. They supposedly signed the contract voluntarily and with their own hands. I am writing not voluntarily, but with my own hand. In the end, he says, just write personally. They told him the situation. Many complained. Finally, the political officer came in the evening divisions. He says something like, if you have any questions, write to me. Let's talk and solve the problem. But he didn't leave a number. The prosecutor's office say little can help. It's better to solve the problem within. So basically, those guys were fooled into signing a contract and at the end of the day, they're going to be sent to the front lines just because of their negligence. Let me read this out to you. According to relatives of one of the soldiers on October 20th, the day after arriving at the military unit number 87441 in Chebarkul, the command called some of the servicemen in for a talk. They were given documents that the command called standard papers. Supposedly, everyone signs them in order to continue serving in the unit. No one was allowed to read the text, and the soldiers were intimidated by the fact that if they did not sign the documents, they would be sent to the combat zone, and their relatives would only see them as Cargo 200. If you guys don't know what Cargo 200 is, it's when you come back to your home inside of a coffin. That's what the military terms use, Cargo 200. And Cargo 300 is a wounded person. In the end, almost all the conscripts signed the papers and later learned that it was a contract with the Ministry of Defense. Looks like those guys really got fooled. After that, relatives say the military began to show propaganda films about the conscripts who died at the border. 
Officers directly say that the soldiers are going to be sent to the combat zone. Many of the servicemen have not yet completed the young soldier course. Some have not even taken the oath. Some conscripts try to write a report to the unit commander, but none of the complaints reach the addressee. The commander avoids talking to conscripts under the pretext that there is a special time for such conversations. Can you imagine this, guys? A bunch of youngsters that were doing conscription service got fooled into signing papers that they thought were mandatory to do the conscript service. It looks like instead of doing mobilization, the Russian government and the Russian military has decided to do a genius move. To fool the soldiers and once they sign the contract, they basically sign away their life and they don't have any more rights. They only have the right to listen to the commander and the military head himself. Very, very sad, but that is the reality of what's happening. I would love to hear your opinions on this. And by the way, guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I see most of you guys who watch the videos or still not subscribed and like the video. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. But yes, please tell me what you think about this situation. Do you think that instead of a mobilization in Russia, they're going to be fooling the young conscripts of the age 18, 19 and 20 into signing some papers that they don't know of and then send them out to the front line? to regenerate the amount of soldiers that Russia has lost so that they could have more and more people to go and fight for Russia. This is very sad, but at the same time, very interesting to learn the ways that the Russian military works. Tell me, in your country, does, does the military do something like this? It would be very interesting to learn about this. I also got some very, very interesting news. Thailand was invited to join BRICS. Flippin' heck, and I'm in Thailand? That does not sound like a flippin' good idea. Tell me, do you think that Thailand will join BRICS? And if it joins BRICS, does that mean I am under danger now? I'm not sure. We will have to be looking at the news very closely and learning about what will Thailand say about bricks. Now to the last news of today's video, which is very, very interesting. A Russian doctor, a pediatrician, Nadezhda Buyanova was sentenced to 5.5 years in a prison in case of fakes about the army. Yes, guys, in Russia, there is a law that if you say that the Russian army has done something wrong or have done some atrocities in a different country, you can actually go to prison because that is spreading fakes all around the place. The Tushinsky District Court of Moscow sentenced a 68-year-old Nadezhda Buyanova to five and a half years in prison in the case of fakes about the army. The prosecutor actually requested six years in prison. The case against Buyanova was opened based on a denunciation by the ex-wife of a Russian soldier killed in Ukraine. Anastasia Akinshina, according to the widow, her seven-year-old son was being capricious at the doctor's appointment because he missed his father. In response, Bayanova allegedly said in the presence of the child that the man was a legitimate target for Ukraine. Now, this still hasn't been proved to today's day that she actually said this, but from the court files that we could see, she said a legitimate target for Ukraine. That's why he got killed. So he basically got what he deserved. And because of that, she got 5.5 years in prison. The clinic fired Buyanova. At first, the institution said that they had a recording from the office. Then it turned out that there was no recording of the appointment. Later, Akinshin herself admitted that she was not sure whether her son was present in the office during the scandal. So first they said they have a recording, then they say they don't have a recording, the son was there, the son wasn't there. How could you even put a person in prison for speaking out their mind? All right, you fire a person for saying that your father died because he was a target for Ukraine, but putting a person in prison, that's crazy. And then saying that, oh, we're not sure if she actually said it, but whatever. That's the judicial system in Russia. 
all right, screw it. Let's just let's just put her in a prison. Who cares anyway? Who's well, we're gonna show the rest of the population that you should not talk out your opinions because if you do, we're gonna be sending you to the gulag. Since April, 68-year-old Buyanova has been in a pretrial detention. She has not admitted guilt. The doctor's lawyers insisted that the case is basically solely on false testimony from the mother and the child. So the lawyers are saying that it's a big lie. The judge sees that there's no evidence for this, even considering the stupid Russian laws that they made, but they still decided to put that 68-year-old woman into a prison for five and a half years. Flipping heck, unbelievable. A doctor, literally a doctor for kids, was put in prison for some case that was clearly made up, and there's absolutely no proof for this stupid law that was created in Russia just to keep the population quiet so that they do not speak out their opinions and talk about the reality of what's happening between Russia and Ukraine. Thank you very much for watching today's video. I would really appreciate if you could hit the like button and the subscribe button. If you would like to support the channel, you could check out the links in the description. And also, if you like automotive content, you can always go into my second channel called Section Drive and check out some videos there. The links are also going to be in the description. Stay safe out there. Don't fall for any propaganda. And when you watch the news, make sure you check multiple reliable sources before making your opinion. Thank you very much, and I'll see you guys next time.